Well, praise the Lord. It's just good to see you this morning. Um, this is pre-recorded, so we're doing it a little differently than what I've done in the past. Um, the the pre-recording is different. So I won't be reacting to um, your comments during the broadcast. And it's not because I'm ignoring you. It's because, well, it's pre-recorded. <laughs> but in any event, I want to welcome you to the Lions Cross uh, Facebook broadcast. We are just so happy to be connected with you this morning. Please like us, follow us, share, comment, uh, reshare, repost um, your, your comments on your Facebook page. We absolutely appreciate uh, your support. And those of you who want to, those of you who want to support us, um, you can do so by Givelify or PayPal. Uh, but we certainly request your prayers. We solicit, we solicit your prayers, and really are just grateful and thankful for the connection. So let us begin, let us begin uh, with a prayer, with prayer. The Bible says men ought always to pray and not to faint. The Bible says pray without ceasing. So let us do that this morning. Oh, heavenly and gracious Father, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. Uh, bless us, strengthen, keep, and encourage us this day. Move in our life in a powerful way. Bless everyone under the sound of my voice. And Lord God, give us all understanding. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. So give us understanding this morning. The word is good. So taste and see that the Lord is good. And, and so God, in the name of Jesus, bless your people with this word that's about to be spoken today. And Lord God, let it be a life-changing word. Uh, let it be a life-affirming word, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, cause your people to grow. Cause them to go in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So this morning, I wanted to, uh, to talk about, and I believe the Lord put on my heart, uh, the subject matter of <clears throat> what about tism in the name of Jesus. I begin, I'll begin uh, with a very um, uh, quoted passage of scripture from the Gospel of Matthew, the 28th chapter and the 19th verse, okay? Go ye therefore and teach all nations. These are the words of of Jesus Christ to his disciples. So take note of who he was talking to. That's gonna be extremely important as we study this word out. Go ye therefore, Jesus said, verse 19, the 28th chapter of Matthew, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And it is very, very, very simple. Either <clears throat> the disciples repeated what Jesus said, <clears throat> or <clears throat> they understood his instruction and therefore did what Jesus said, or there is no biblical record of people being baptized the way Jesus wanted people to be baptized. It's one of those three. It's just one of those three. And the reason why I say that, because <clears throat> in the book of Acts, which is a history of the New Testament church, there is no record, zero, none, nada, niche, nil, zip, zippo, <laughs> of of anyone being baptized after someone said, I therefore baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. 
no place in the book of Acts or any other um, epistle written by a apostle of Jesus Christ. And why is that important? Because when Jesus was talking here in Matthew 28, 19, he was speaking to whom? Yeah, <laughs> he was speaking to the apostles. Again, they either did what Jesus said or they repeated what Jesus said or there is no record that they ever did what Jesus said. All right. Obviously, obviously, we know the disciples who became the apostles. Men Jesus personally taught and chose select. They were, with the extent and exception, uh, well, I take that back. I was about to say with the extended exception of Judas. But Jesus knew who Judas was. <laughs> Jesus knew that Judas would betray him. He that sticks his hand, he dips his hand <laughs> with me is going to be <laughs> the one who betrays me. And Judas talking about, Lord, is it I? And Jesus said, thou hast said. <laughs> so I take that back. All of the disciples who became apostles uh, obeyed the words of Jesus. They did. They did what Jesus said, after having received the gift of the Holy Ghost. I said, after, because I know there's some sitting back saying, well, uh, Peter, he denied Jesus. I said, after they had received the gift of the Holy Ghost. There's something about the Holy Ghost that opens up your understanding. It, it, it helps you to understand the scriptures. It really does. It is, it is a comforter. That word comforter, uh, that Jesus used in the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, means paracletus or helper. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, all right, let's keep moving, let's keep moving. What we find in the Word of God, the first time this issue of water baptism is discussed, we find it in the book of Acts the second chapter. And um, we're going to take this real slow because we don't want you to miss the full import of what is taking place here. In the book of Acts, the second chapter, if you look at the first four verses, it describes the disciples who later become the apostles it describes them receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. Right, 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 right. After they received the Holy Ghost, God opened up their understanding. God opened up their understanding. We find Peter, the very one who denied Jesus, denied Jesus three times. He's now bold now. He's got the Holy Ghost and he's emboldened by the power of the Spirit of God. And he preaches the death, the burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I love this after having done so. In verse 36, he boldly states, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. In other words, Jesus is letting these Jews know at this Jewish feast among thousands and thousands of Jews, you all crucified the Messiah. And the Bible says in verse 37, now when they, these Jews, heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Why? They were pricked by the power of the truth being spoken by this Great Apostle Peter, whom Jesus said, upon this truth, ah, upon this rock, this truth, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will prevail against it. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And saying unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, it wasn't just Peter 
notice, so you have to, you have to really, when you're reading the scripture, you just have to pay attention to the actual words. And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles. Some people say, well, it was just Peter. No, they said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles. I'm going to repeat that again because somebody doesn't want to understand that it wasn't just Peter's thoughts about this thing. And to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? What can we do? We cannot uncrucify him. We've crucified him. We can't take it back. That's why uh, the death penalty is so problematic. You crucify somebody, you kill somebody who's innocent, you can't get it back. You can't. There's no do-over in executions. I'm going to leave that alone. That's another subject. Then Peter said unto them, so now having asked Peter and the rest of the apostles, Peter answers and says unto them, repent. We've been talking about repentance, haven't we? Yes, we have. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We began you know, this discussion in the Gospel of Matthew, the 28th chapter, verse 19. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> the problem today and I don't mean any disrespect to anybody, but their problem is very simple. They don't, they don't know the name of the Father. They don't know the name of the Son, and they don't know the name of the Holy Ghost. The disciples did. Those men who were taught from the mouth of Jesus, they knew what that name was. That name, that name, the name that's above every other name, that name where every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, that name, the whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of Jesus, that name, of course, is Jesus. And that's why, that's why no apostle who was standing there with Peter corrected him when he said, in response to the very simple question concerning salvation, what shall we do? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. And even told you why. It's for the remission, the removal of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You know, let me just share this with you um, quickly because I know the time is just zipping by. A lot of people talk about water baptism as a work. Okay, faith without works is dead. We know that, we understand that. But there's something I think that those people who automatically spew that out of their mouth miss. This is what I think they miss. I must have faith to believe the scripture to be true. Let me repeat that. I must have faith to believe the scripture to be true. In other words, water baptism is an act of faith. I believe the scripture to be true, that it is for the remission of sin. Not the water, but the power of the name. Good God Almighty. But doing it the way God wants me to do it, being in the will of God, brings the blessings of God. Brings the blessings of God. Hallelujah. In the book of Acts, the second chapter, look at what happened in verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word Come on now, we go back to, we go back to believing the word of God. Those that gladly received his word were baptized and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. 
I want you to look in the book of Acts because we're talking about the history of the church. The book of Acts, the eighth chapter. The book of Acts, the eighth chapter. And I'm going to pick up at about the 12th verse. At about the 12th verse. And these were the Samaritans. And what we find is, but when they, the Samaritans, believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. And I know somebody sitting there saying, well, it doesn't tell us exactly what was said during their water baptism. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Oh, hold on, hold on, because I'm gonna get I'm gonna get to verse 16. <laughs> I'll share that with you. I'll let the cat out of the bag right now. But let me keep, keep reading quickly. Then Simon, then Simon, this this sorcerer, then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now, when the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Verse, verse 16, for as yet he, referring to the Holy Ghost, was fallen upon none of them, only, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord of the Lord Jesus. <clears throat> in the book of in the book of Acts, the tenth chapter, in the book of Acts, the tenth chapter, Peter is in the home of this good man. <clears throat> And he was a good man. He, he gave alms. He prayed always. This good man by the name of Cornelius, we got a deacon in our church. In fact, he's the president of our deacon. Well, boy, his first name is Cornelius. I like them biblical names. I love them biblical names. But in any event, <clears throat> in the book of Acts, the 10th chapter, here is Peter. He goes into the home of these people who were Gentiles who were Gentiles, and he is preaching the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. He preaches that. And the Bible tells us in verse 44, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. <clears throat> and they of the circumcision, the Jews, which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter. Before I read what Peter said, I want you to remember, just do a little quick flashback of the Gospel of John, the third chapter. There was this man by the name of Nicodemus, and he came to Jesus by night said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles except God be with him. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus did not understand what Jesus said, and he asked him, How is it that a man can be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Because he's thinking of a physical birth, not a spiritual one, but Jesus was talking about a spiritual birth. So Jesus said in response to the question, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. If you notice what happened to the Samaritans was that they were baptized in water, born of water, but that was not sufficient. And that's why the other apostles were sent that they might receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, baptized with the Spirit, born of the Spirit. Here, here in the book of Acts, the 10th chapter, in the book of Acts, the 10th chapter, 
Cornelius and his household received the Holy Ghost, born of the Spirit. But that's not sufficient in and of itself because Jesus said you must be born of water and the Spirit. So here in the book of Acts, the 10th chapter, verse 47, here is Peter having seen these people, having received the gift of the Holy Ghost the same way he received it. Remember Acts 2 verses 1 through 4, it's, the Bible's very specific, very descriptive about what happens when people receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. He says, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we, and he commanded them to be baptized. How? In the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. And I know somebody sitting there saying, ooh, but he didn't say Jesus. But who's the Lord? Who is the Lord? It's Jesus. <laughs> it's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. All right. The book of Acts, the 19th chapter. The book of Acts, the 19th chapter. These, this is a beautiful, oh, I love, I love this chapter. Let me tell you why I love this chapter. There are some people out there who, you know, once they do something or they think they've done it the right way, even if it's wrong, they're not interested in correcting themselves. Um, even if it's insufficient, they're not looking to correct themselves. Uh, hubris, pride, <laughs> whatever it might be, prevents them from simply saying, you know what? I'll just obey the word of God. I will just obey the word of God. But we don't have that example here. We have some humble people. The Bible tells us, I'm reading in the book of Acts, the 19th chapter, verse one. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Oh, look at the humility there. Sometimes people want to fake it until they make it. Okay, no, 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 no. Uh, we, man, we're ignorant of it. And there's nothing wrong with ignorance unless you don't want to be instructed, <laughs> unless you don't want to hear the truth. Ignorance simply means you don't know. That's all it means. And that's all they were saying. We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, unto what then were ye baptized? Remember, these were uh, disciples of John the Baptist. And they said, and, they, and he said unto them, unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, unto John's baptism, that baptism of repentance. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should, um, they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Born of water, born of the Spirit. There's, you know what? There, there's no rocket science in this, saints. Dearly beloved, there, there's... <laughs> There's no deep, 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 deep secret here. It's very simple. It's very consistent. Again, you ask yourself about Matthew uh, 28 and 19. Did they repeat what Jesus said or did they do what Jesus said? Uh, my bishop uh, uses the example of saying to one of the brothers in the audience, go out, please repeat after me, go out to my, my, my vehicle and get my Bible. And it even gets them to shout it out. But the people recognize after he points out the fact that while the person perfectly repeated what he said, his Bible is still out in his vehicle because the person didn't do what he said. The real question you have to ask yourself is, am I, am I satisfied with somebody repeating the words of Jesus? 
or do I want someone to do the words of Jesus? Do I want to be a doer of the word of God? Be doers of the word, not hearers only. And I'll throw in, not repeaters only. Do the word of God. Ooh, Lord just gave me revelation. So let me talk to the sisters right now. Let's say your husband knows this scripture from the book of Exodus, the 20th chapter. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Let me ask you this question. Do you want him to just repeat it or do it? <laughs> Woo! Then why is water baptism in Jesus' name any different? You don't want a re just a repeater. You want a doer. Come on now. Are we not the bride of Christ? And does not the bridegroom expect us to obey his voice and not simply repeat the words that are written in the book? The letter, it killeth. It's the spirit that maketh alive. And the spirit flows from from obedience. I'm running out of time, man. I only got about three more minutes. Let me let me let me add some stuff in here. Let me get when I say some stuff, I apologize. Let me get to some more word. In the book of Acts, the 22nd chapter, the this is um and a description of my 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 uh, my great apostle. I said my great apostle, one of my favorite apostles, Paul. And his experience, his experience coming into the knowledge of God. And he's getting instruction from one man by the name of Ananias. And in verse 16, the 22nd chapter of the book of Acts, Ananias says to him, and now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins. Remember, water baptism is for the remission of sin if you do it the way God wants you to do it. Wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And somebody said there saying, well, did Saul know the name? Because he, he was a persecutor of the church. I'm glad you asked. Because if you just bag up a little bit, <laughs> See, sometimes it's good to read scripture that comes before and after a certain scripture so you can get the flavor of the, of the scripture, right? I'm starting at verse 7. Here is Saul on his way to Damascus to persecute Christians. And the Bible says, I'll pick up at verse 6, and it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me. And I fell unto the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, what was his question? Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, the Lord said to him, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. So when Ananias said, man, go call on the name of the Lord, Saul had just been told who the Lord was. I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. So yes, he could call on the name of the Lord because he knew the name to call and that name is Jesus. All right. Um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, discussion. Uh, we could have gone further and further into it. Uh, really could have. But I thank you for joining us. I thank you for your prayers. I thank you for your support. Man, we got some folk out there who love the Lion's Cross and, and really support our ministry. Pray for it. Uh, because we're word-based, I believe. I believe the reason why is because we focus on the word of God. Well, uh, continue to keep us in prayer. Uh, like us, follow us, share, uh, do what you gotta do to get, get this word out there, amen? Now, I love you, but God 
loves you best. We love you, saints. Have a wonderfully blessed day.